Andy just had another huge news briefing that we're going to go through for you today. They talked about Zen 4, Zen 5, RDNA 3, RDNA 4, and basically covered the roadmap for the next couple years all the way through 2024. We're going to take the couple dozen or so slides of information and condense it into the key points for you today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So first of all, AMD's announcements had a number of key topics that unmuddied the waters about the continued existence of certain products, like Threadripper, for example, which has been pretty quiet for a couple of years now at this point, other than the Threadripper Pro 5000 launch that only really exists in Lenovo products. So they talked about that a bit. Uh, 3D vCache also AMD committed to bringing back, so it will be returning. It's not just the 5800X 3D and then it dies. Uh, AMD is committing to bringing it back to Zen 4 and to Zen 5 products. AMD presented this slide about 3D vCache on Zen 4 CPUs. Currently, our understanding is that AMD plans to launch its next 3D vCache CPUs as a mid-step refresh in the Zen 4 generation. It probably won't be available at launch, and that wouldn't make a ton of sense anyway, since they'll just use all the supply for normal CPUs, but it will come out after launch to push for more improvement and probably to leave something in the bank to compete against Intel when it inevitably launches something in this generation. Now, of course, we don't know yet because we don't have a crystal ball, but well, we, we sort of do. It's right here and it's on store.gamersnexus.net. But we're not sure if the future 3 dv cache CPUs will have the same 10 to 15% uplift that the 5800X 3D has. Uh, in theory, increasing cache should only benefit applications which like the increased cache up until the usual diminishing returns when you start to get that asymptotic line. So we'll see where it slams into a wall, if at all, with the vCache being stacked on top. But for now, it's in the plans at least. Ryzen 7000 news mostly consisted of things that we were already told by Andy previously. They sort of rehashed it. There's a couple bits of new information in there, but not much. Just to go over it quickly though, Andy said that Zen 4 will post an 8 to 10% improvement in IPC over Zen 3. This also had it recommitting to its 15% single-threaded performance statements it made previously. It also reminded everyone of a 5.5 gigahertz clock. Now, from what we understand, they're only guaranteeing that's a single core at this point. We'll see how much it does when actually boosting all cores. The company also boasted a 25% performance per watt increase. And of course, we already knew from previously that every Zen 4 CPU currently planned will have IGPs, so that isn't news either. Andy did, however, show an upcoming launch of what it called Zen 4C and Zen 5C CPUs, which sparked some follow-up questions from us. And we sought clarity from AMD over what the C designation means, and if that four nanometer vertical bar, five nanometer, and four nanometer vertical bar, three nanometer, if that designation aligned with the images below it architecturally, or if it's just sort of arbitrary. And the answer is it was arbitrary. They just designed the slide that way. It doesn't actually mean that the sliding scale is five to four this way versus the graphics. More likely what this actually means is it's the usual desktop notebook split for the process node versus the architecture. As for the C designation, so that one, our understanding of this currently is that it's assigned to products that have what AMD refers to as dense cores. So that would be things that are more or less cloud optimized or cloud focused where they are maybe 128 or whatever, 200 plus core configurations, that's where the C comes in. So not particularly relevant for probably most of our audience, but if you're into the cloud computing or enterprise space, that's where you would start to pay attention to the C designation. Now for the next thing in uh, consumer space, there was some Zen 5 news. AMD officially detailed it, officially announced Zen 5, even though we're not on Zen 4 yet, but it sets the roadmap, which is the entire purpose of the presentation they did here. So new Zen 5 CPUs were discussed and uh, these are codenamed Granite Ridge. The AMD roadmap shows these as landing in about 2024. And for some context here, AMD has two CPU teams that work simultaneously. One of them is working on a ground up build at any given time. So that would be Zen 5. And then the other team is working on sort of improvements, progression, uh, updates to existing architectures for whatever a refresh might be or the next big launch on that same architecture. 
So Zen 5 is ground up. They also committed to 3 dB cash on this one just to get that out of the way. AMD, in addition to announcing Zen 5, also spent some time outlining the basic improvements to Infinity Fabric. So fourth gen Infinity Fabric will allow coherent memory between the CPU and the GPU. AMD elaborated on coherent chiplet design with 2.5D and 3D designs, where 2.5D would typically be something like HBM or high bandwidth memory, and 3D would be more along the lines of 3D vCache, or stacked cache on top of an existing die. Infinity Fabric will also support Xilinx extensions. Xilinx is a company that AMD recently acquired, and uh, Infinity Fabric 4th Gen will also be moving to support CXL and UCIE. Now, we've talked about both of these in hardware news in the past, but not in too much detail other than the consortium and what they were trying to do. So CXL is the Computer Express Link cache coherent interconnect and it's developed by a whole group of companies including competitors like intel amd nvidia basically everyone else in the space and ucie is the universal chiplet interconnect express which allows larger soc designs and focuses on unifying the technology that's used to connect chiplets and get them to communicate with each other so the industry can sort of move in that direction of MCMs or chiplet designs. Now that's all the news we have on Zen 5 and 4th Gen Infinity Fabric, at least for now. Next one is Threadripper. This one's kind of fun because it's been a while since we've really talked about Threadripper. AMD hasn't said basically anything about Threadripper since Lenovo launched its workstations for Threadripper 5000 Pro, and then it went silent. Uh, so this is this is going on know, like a year plus at this point. Anyway, there's some updates. Andy talked about Threadripper Zen 4 CPUs briefly. So in the very least, we know those will exist. The uh, 5000 Pro series, AMD said that Dell will be launching its own Dell Precision line of, of computers that have the existing Zen 3 Threadripper Pro 5000 series CPUs in them. It's not a new CPU, it's just a new vendor carrying it. And Dell's Precision desktops, in the past, they've been good. They're built by different teams than the Alienware desktops and the G5 5000. Maybe these will be good. We haven't looked at a precision desktop in a very long time. Uh, and actually, as a company, never officially, although I've worked on them. So if you want us to look at one of these precision desktops with Threadripper 5000 Pro, let us know in the comments. And if you don't care, then let us know also so we can decide if we want to waste the money on it. They're very expensive. Anyway. Uh, these, so Dell's page introduces the Precision 7865 as its first Threader for 5000 Pro system. The Precision desktop has two drive cages at the front and what look to be five and a quarter inch bays. Hopefully there's a hot swap backplane there and there's about 50% ventilation in the plastic pseudo mesh front panel. The IO on the front is actually pretty good and that's really all we know about it for now. We don't have hard prices. They're definitely gonna have multiple SKUs. We'll pay attention once it formally launches, but for now they've just announced it and they're starting to move it forward. Now there's no news on Threadripper 5000 non-pro CPUs or actually really motherboards for them either other than whatever the OEMs are using. So our understanding right now is that all of the motherboards for Threadripper 5000 Pro are WRX80, meaning there's no TRX40. It looks like that platform is pretty much dead at this point. Uh, that would be the four channel version as opposed to the eight channel version, which more formally moves Threadripper into that firm workstation space other than the people in between who need PCIe lanes uh, where you don't get it on sort of the high-end Ryzen CPUs, but maybe you also don't need the memory channel. So TRX40 is kind of a, it's going to be left behind, it looks like at this point. Now for Zen 4, all we know regarding Threadripper is that it will exist, which is news in itself, and it will be five nanometer process. That's all Andy's provided. It's basically one slide. Uh, pro labeling wasn't in that slide. That doesn't mean that there will be a non-pro version, but historically, Andy has always said either Threadripper or Threadripper Pro with the full tag. Um, so hopefully that means that there will be enthusiast class Threadripper CPUs that aren't just only pro designation where you pay a lot extra for stuff that you might not really need. Uh, in the least, it's a commitment that Threadripper isn't dead. As for Epic, Epic's related to Threadripper CPUs. They share the same chiplet source uh, supply, that is. They basically are constructed the same way, just targeted different markets, different core densities and counts. So AMD also noted that its Zen 4 Epic CPUs will have 12 DDR5 channels. Makes sense. If you're an enterprise company, you can probably afford the enormous price for DDR5 right now. It's not gotten that much better. Uh, that is up from eight DDR4 channels on Zen 3, which makes the Zen 4 Epic CPUs coming out the most densely memory packed, or the option of it anyway, uh, server CPUs we've ever heard of outside of sort of the combination style um, 
uh, pseudo supercomputer approach where you get like multiple DGXs or whatever and combine them. So uh, pretty cool from a technology standpoint. Probably not something we're going to be looking at unless they accidentally make it so you can overclock Epic, in which case maybe we'll work with Roman again on some Epic overclocking. It's time to get your meme making GIF generators ready. That's right. I said GIF. Fight me in the comments. Uh, the next one is about the metaverse. Sadly, AMD can't seem to escape the meta shroud of meta bullshit surrounding the metaverse and had to name it at least once in its presentation to show clueless investors that, yeah, we know what that word means. It's good, good. It has to do with gamers. That means money. So this was AMD's metaverse reference. Literally infinitely increased demand for gigaflops in 2030, which we're definitely able to predict this far out. And naturally, that's how we all shop for technology. Yes, I would like to purchase 1 million gigaflops, please, in approximately 2030. Uh, so of course, the natural question here is, what creates this infinite demand for gigaflops in the metaverse, such that billionaires will it to exist anyway? AMD answers that question. Potential metaverse trajectory, undercut only slightly by the more likely actually realistic graphics compute. So um, we don't know what any of that means, but we like to include a dystopian story in our news recaps. So this should fit the quota for the next month or so. Back to actually relevant information, AMD also spent some time talking about GPUs. So RDNA 3, for example, actually RDNA and Navi 4 as well. Uh, AMD ran a slide showing its RDNA 4 GPUs on the roadmap on the timeline for a 2023 to 2024 launch. This follows the 5 nanometer RDNA 3 GPUs in the next year or so. AMD claims a 50% increase in performance per watt in RDNA 3, noting 5 nanometer process improvements, a compute unit or CU overhaul, and this is the most relevant part, chiplet packaging. So a couple things here. The Performance per watt doesn't mean lower power. It just means the efficiency is going up. More work is getting done per watt being consumed. But it's fully possible that the GPUs still consume more power or that their transient spikes are still higher in transient power consumption. Uh, so there's some, something to be aware of. Power draw has to come down sometime in the future. It's very high right now for basically every vendor, except for Ryzen CPU is still doing pretty well. But everything else from AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA is running pretty hot. Uh, it is possible to have both an increase in power consumption and in efficiency or performance per watt. And it looks like we might have that with the 40 series. We'll see, though. But the other thing to note here is that chiplet packaging is probably the most interesting aspect of RDNA 3. Companies moving toward chiplet designs add some packaging complexity and some additional limitations. So chiplet to chiplet communications, a potential bottleneck if they don't solve it with good design because you're moving out of a monolithic, a large monolithic die where you just have all intra die comms for everything, and obviously into multiple smaller dies that need something to bridge them. So that's a potential bottleneck. It's largely been, uh, I mean, really resolved and worked on, focused on very heavily by AMD. Uh, the benefit of chiplet approaches, as you all likely know at this point, is reduced die size, and that's for why that matters. It's because the larger the die gets, the one, you might surpass the reticle limit of the actual manufacturing technologies. So that would be sort of a lithographic limit in that context where it doesn't matter how big of a design you can put together in engineering. If you can't manufacture it, it's irrelevant. So it solves that. It also solves the more important issue, which is that the larger the die gets, especially for monolithic designs, uh, the more likely you are to have a high error rate across those dies on a wafer. So you need more wafers because the product design is larger, so it can't fit as many on a wafer, which is a fixed size. And then uh, more of the dies that get diced out of that wafer are defective. You either bend them down or you throw them out. Going with chiplet designs, we've talked about this before, means you can make a lot of smaller dies, much higher yield on that, so you get more good units per wafer, which reduces the cost to make them because you're using fewer supplies to make the same sort of amount of things, uh, in a sense anyway. And then also it might reduce cost for consumer depending on how much of that extra cost savings the company wants to take for margin versus uh, used to compete with their competitors if they have any at the time. Anyway, that's the chiplet RDNA news. Really interesting. We're looking forward to 
uh, taking a closer look at what all this means. For cDNA, we don't follow the cDNA side very closely. We'll just quickly mention it, but it's out, outside of our area of expertise. cDNA is AMD's scientific targeted architecture. The biggest claim in the deck that was made is that it's uh, alleging a greater than 5x increase specifically in AI performance per watt. So note the qualifier there, that's for AI processing. And we're not sure 100% what AI processing as, translates to as a workload. If you work in that field, please leave us a, a comment of, with some detail of what precisely that means to you in the context of AMD's slide, because we'd all like to learn here. I'm sure the other viewers would appreciate it as well. Now, typically, things like machine learning or deep learning, you're talking about stuff like FP16 or FP8 or whatever versus FP32. Uh, but on our team, we don't work with AI, machine learning, or deep learning. So leave your input on that. Anyway, this all coincides with some additional information. So one of them, Andy published some graphics showing the change from cDNA2 to cDNA3. And mostly this highlights the unified memory APU architecture, where previously it was coherent memory architecture. HBM moves to a unified block that's shared between the CPU and the GPU components of this APU, the upcoming AMD Instinct APUs. Finally, this actually makes true some ancient rumors about HBM on APUs. It's just not a consumer product yet. This coincides as well with MI300 5 nanometer news targeting a launch towards or in 2023. The MI300 data center APU will combine cDNA3 GPUs, Zen 4 CPUs cache, and HBM chiplets into one component. One more small bit of news, it's on the notebook side. So this slide showed the AMD codename Phoenix Point Zen 4 CPUs with RDNA3 GPUs preceding the Strix Point, Asus will be mad, Zen 5 product, which will run RDNA3 Plus, so that's a sort of half step, and Zen 5. These are both for notebooks, and the main takeaway is just reconfirming code names, nodes, and timelines. Strix Point will be nearing or in 2024. So that's it for AMD's news. The only major disappointing thing we ran into was the metaverse references. It's, it really just comes across as gross when these big companies talk about metaverse because you look at it as someone who's played games forever, and you're like, do these C-suite executives realize that what they're describing either exists or is stupid, depending on how you look at it. The marketing will probably start working on people at some point. It'll feel like a zombie apocalypse. Hopefully, we're not left here looking at the comments at some point and going, uh, the company's got to them. They've become metaverse zombies. I don't know, maybe, it'll, maybe it'll become a thing. But right now, it's not a thing, other than to boost share sale uh, prices. So anyway, that's it for this one. We'll have a normal hardware news up as well, but AMD had a, a really dense amount of announcements in the past week. Hopefully Intel and Nvidia have some stuff as well so we can run some pieces on them in the near future. But that's it for right now. Check back for the other hardware news and for a lot of our other content coming up for the next few days here. Subscribe for more, go to store.gamersaccess.net. If you'd like to help us out directly, like by grabbing some of our crystal spheres with computer component designs in them, we've got a teardown shot where it's a computer that Andrew completely 3D designed and blew apart in the crystal sphere. Uh, really cool, we use these for our awards at the end of the year when we give them to manufacturers for high-end uh, products and things that performed well. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. We'll see you all next time.